Morning, everyone. Welcome to our service, those who are here and those who are sitting comfortably, I hope, at home. Uh, just a reminder that next Sunday, uh, we're unable to have a service in here because of Shireen's ordination on the Monday. So our service next Sunday will be at Willoughby Church at 10 o'clock and it will be a group harvest service. Um, another reminder that on Friday, uh, it is the excitement of the district church council meeting here, the annual meeting, and that will be here in church at seven o'clock on Friday. And there are a load of papers at the back, um, which Mike will organize so that they don't blow away. But if you are a member of the DCC and haven't already got your papers, and there's four sets of them, do please pick them up on your way out. And sadly, as you will have noticed, we no longer have a choir. It was nice while it lasted, wasn't it? <laughs> um, but we will be reverting to our practice just before that of sitting and listening to Brian playing most of the hymns um, and, and going through the words in our minds as we gently hum along if we wish. And do feel free to sit or stand for those as you feel appropriate. And we're going to start our service this morning by having uh, a time of quiet and listening to a, a recording of the song, which we should have been singing, but we can't. But sitting and listening to Come, now is the time to worship. So now we come just as we are and we come to praise God as we hum and listen to at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. Thank you. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Pray together. Almighty, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, are open all, all desires are open, open, and from and whom no sins are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, Spirit that we may perfectly love you. Love and worthily Lord, magnify Lord, your holy name. holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We sit or kneel. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you our god amen almighty god who forgives all who truly repent have mercy upon us pardon and deliver us from all our sins confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal through jesus christ our lord amen let us pray Almighty God, whose only Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence, give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now have our first reading. The first reading is taken from the letter to the Philippines. 
If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. Taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth, and every tongue confess that Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be you. to God. And our next hymn is, There is the Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son. Precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. Hear the Gospel of the Lord according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. 
you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father and the Son, and through the Holy Spirit, may we all hear together God's words. Take a seat. There was uh, one thing in the service I soon got used to when I turned into an Anglican, uh, and that was saying the creed every time. Um, I wonder what happens to you when we get to the creed. Uh, I mean, I hope we don't go on to automatic pilot. But I want us to go to the epistle this morning. Might be helpful if you turned back to it in your service order. Because what we read from Paul in Philippians is one of the great creedal statements in the New Testament. Uh, now, there's one misconception about Lincolnshire that we all know about, that it's totally flat. Um, you can get some wonderful views, can't you? Well, that is, what, that is just what Paul gives us here. It's, it's good to get the big picture. And this is the big picture of Jesus where he started from, how far he came down, and where he's returned to now. So let's try and take this step by step. Jesus Christ, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. Now, that's the starting point, just so there's no mistake. Being in very nature God. Now, I think it would be fair to say that if you are by very nature God, that puts you in a rather privileged position. And in our world, people who are in a privileged position tend to behave in certain ways, don't they? I mean, say for example, you've got the dictator of a country who's living in unimaginable wealth. They don't give it up very easily, do they? You know, you can supply your own example. Or there's another picture. Now, ladies, this may not be a nice thought. But suppose somebody tried to snatch your handbag. How desperately would you try to hold on to it? Now, that's the kind of picture behind this word grasped here. 
he did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. Jesus doesn't hang on. He simply lets go to come to us in the way that we all know about. And that is a huge first step. And then, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. But you see, it's not just the kind of person, not just that God became human, it's the kind of person he became. Taking the very nature of a servant. In just the same way that he is by very nature God, so he takes the nature of a servant. Only the thing is, it's not really just servant. The word is actually slave. And this is being said in a world where slavery is real. Nobody became a slave by choice. Jesus did. Jesus did. He didn't come just so he could experience for a bit what it's like to be one of us. If I can put it this way, he doesn't come to earth just as a tourist. He comes as a slave. I mean, picture, for example, him washing the disciples' feet. But that wasn't the ultimate way in which he serves us. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Well, crucifixion was a slave's death. It always had been. But it's an unusual way to put it, isn't it? Became obedient to death. But you see, if you go back to the beginning, because he was by, by very nature God, death was the one thing that had no power over him. Not unless he chose himself to become obedient to it. And that's what he did for us. Even death on a cross. The very bottom rung of the ladder. Yeah. Every step is a completely selfless denial of everything that Jesus was by right. And Paul says, he made himself nothing. Is that an exaggeration? Don't think so. And he did that so that by faith in it all, we can come back to God. But of course, that is not the end of the story. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him a name above the high, above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's God's responding. It's God the Father responding to everything the Son has done in obedience and in love. Uh, I mean, you see, put it in human terms. Uh, now, I don't mind saying that I am very proud of my children, and I'm sure many of you are too. Well, this is God the Father being, in a wonderful sense, proud of what the Son has done and giving him the name that is above every name. And that's the big picture. Where he started from, how low he came, where he is now. But if you notice, 
This is not just about the Father and the Son. It is about us too. The name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. That's us. Only, it's not quite so straightforward. You see, Jesus said something himself about this. And you might even find it quite shocking. Jesus said, Then shall all the nations of the earth mourn when they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and with great glory. You've got the final great moment of the earth's history. Every eye will see Jesus coming in his glory. But there will be those that mourn because they realize that they've been wrong about him all their lives. And in a way, that's why I wanted us to hear that worship song at the beginning. One day, every tongue will confess you are God. One day, every knee will bow. But the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. So we've got this wonderful picture. Still not quite the end. Because then Paul puts in a great big therefore. And it's always dangerous when Paul puts in a therefore. Because he's telling us what we should do with everything that he's just said. Therefore... Continue to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Ooh. Now, please be careful. It's not work for yourself, not work for your salvation. Not when Jesus has done all that and we just need to be right with God through faith in him. It's work out your salvation. There's a lot of difference between working for something and working out something. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. It's an old phrase, but Paul's just saying how important this is. He's saying, just look at everything Jesus did. And in the light of everything Jesus did, work out your salvation, that wonderful new life that you've got as you believe in him. Work that out. That's another whole sermon, so I better say amen. So now is the time to respond to that call as we stand and say together the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory 
to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit for our prayer. God has called us. As we gather in his name, let us bring to him our prayers, which come from love and concern. Lord, we thank you for all the help and encouragement we are given from the church, from its worship, teaching and fellowship, and from its faithfulness in prayers. We ask for your blessings upon all who preach the word and all who do so by their example. We pray for all Christians who are suffering from persecution or rejection throughout the world. Gracious God, in your goodness, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we ask your blessings upon all who have important decisions to make this week. We pray for those who are rulers and politicians, for scientists and research workers, for judges and all who strive to bring peace. We pray for your guidance, Father, in the way we manage and care for this fragile and beautiful planet, how we can share the world's resources fairly with one another and recognize all humanity as brothers and sisters. Gracious God, in your goodness, hear our prayer. Father God, we give thanks for our families and friends. We pray for the young, the vulnerable, childminders, playgroups and schools, for the Children's Society, its ministry to children in need, its specialised work with mentally and physically handicapped, for those who live in its houses and those who work there, for runaway children and the safe houses set up by the Society. We also pray for those who live in Aldford and surrounding villages. We are asked to pray especially for those who live in Tosby Lane. Gracious God, in your goodness, Hear our prayer. Healing God, we bring before you the suffering of our world. All those wrestling with illness in body, mind or spirit. Those unable to cope, cope with the pressures of daily life. Those who feel their lives to be empty. Those who have lost faith and their minds grow dark. We thank you for all who work to bring help, wholeness and healing the doctors, nurses, psychiatrists, counsellors, clergy and therapists. Lord, support and strengthen all those who share in the work. May your grace bring hope. May your love bring healing. We pray especially for Sheila Newstead, Sheila Meek and Craig Eels. Gracious God, in your goodness, hear our prayer. Loving God, you have promised your special blessings to those who mourn, your comfort to those overwhelmed by grief, your joy to those enduring sorrow. So now we pray for those who have lost loved ones, those coming to terms with the emptiness and heartbreak they feel. We pray especially for Matt Ratana, a police officer shot dead whilst on duty in Croydon on Friday. <clears throat> Reach out to them in their shock, grief, loneliness, and grant them the comfort of your promise. The assurance that death is not the end, but the gateway to new life. Gracious God, in your goodness, hear our prayer. So Heavenly Father, we offer you our hearts with all the love you find inside, and thank you for putting it there. Merciful Father, accept our prayers, for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Please stand for the peace. Christ came and proclaimed the gospel, peace to those who are far off and peace to those who are near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So let's share a sign of peace. And our offertory hymn is how sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. Wise and gracious God, you spread a table before us. Nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of heaven. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you, and say, Holy, 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 God of power and heart, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The supper had ended. He took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, 
we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy should be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms. And bring us with Wilfred and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his Son. Lord, I am not worthy to receive. But only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ given for us. The blood of Christ shed for us. Thank you. 
We say together, God of truth, we have seen with our eyes and touched with our hands the bread of life. Strengthen our faith that we may grow in love for you and for each other. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Our final hymn is Crown Him with Many Crowns. <laughs> love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all those whom you love, this day and always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord.
in the name of Christ. Thank you. 